It's become an annual site off Long Island, and it's not getting any better. Scientists say Long Island waters are seeing one of the most intense brown tide algae blooms in years. CBS 2's Carolyn Gossoff reports from Sayville. It's back. And it's bad. Brown tide muddying the waters of the Great South Bay. You can't help but notice the unappealing cast on this otherwise beautiful view. The water appears to be very dirty. It just looks like mud. And uh, it's, it's really killing a bunker of fish. It's taking the oxygen out of the water. It takes away from fishing. Every, everything that uh, used to be in the bay is gone. Stony Brook marine biologists say the Great South Bay is suffering from the most intense and widespread brown tide in four years. Counts of the algae that causes the brown color are nearly 10 times what's considered harmful to marine life. 35,000 cells per milliliter is the level that can begin to cause harm to, uh, for example, clams. Uh, and we're at uh, you know, half a million cells per milliliter. Spelling the demise of this year's young clam population. Bayman and marine scientist George Remmer says it's not just the clams that have slipped away. I could catch half a bushel of flounder in there as a little boy off the bulkhead. And now? You couldn't catch a flounder in this canal if your life depended on it. We're getting worse and worse blooms. We, we break records every few years. Neil Sluder, who tries to fish in this, blames lawn fertilizers that pour nitrogen into the bay. Everybody wants a green lawn, and God forbid we should have a dandelion because that doesn't look good, so we have to kill them too. At least that's what people think. And we also know there's a lot of unsewered uh, homes there. So on-site septic systems, nitrogen leaching into the bay, uh, and that's the combination that leads to these brown tides. And while these blooms now happen every year, the fact that this year is so intensified should be motivation, say scientists, to act even quicker. In Sayville, Long Island, Carolyn Gussoff, CBS 2 News.